Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to my channel. Hope everybody's doing great. We're going to go over this shot with model extraordinaire Michelle Saldua. We shot this back in September of 2020. Uh, just fantastic shot. Just love everything about it. And Michelle, uh, she did her own hair, makeup, and wardrobe. Styled herself, did, did everything. She is fantastic model um love working with her we've worked together five or six times she's probably uh my all-time favorite model she's the yin to my yang when it comes to model photography and being a photographer so um really love working with her haven't worked with her in a while she's in dallas now which is about a three hour well, about a five hour drive from where i am now um but we will definitely get together again soon we we're still talking and communicating so uh, definitely looking forward to that. So this shot, I posted it on Instagram. A lot of you asked it for, asked for the, you know, I posted the speed edit that I like to do on Instagram. If you haven't subscribed to my Instagram, uh, please do so. I'll link that um, below. It's at Gregory K portraits, uh, post little speed edit reels and things like that of how I did this. Um, this shot is not one of those shots that, uh, I got right in camera. <laughs> And it happens a lot, and that's uh, so. If you're uh, one of those photographers that you know you've got a big studio space and you're able to you know stand back 50 feet and use your 70 to 200 and get in and just use a long focal length and you know really compress the background and you've got a huge backdrop and you can get it right in camera, this video is not for you. So if you're like me and a lot of other people. I shot this shot actually in my in my house basically what's a converted garage is a very small space though and I was probably standing maybe four feet from her at the most um, and I think the focal length that I shot this shot at was like at 28 millimeters and, and all I had at the time was just you know four feet wide roll of white paper uh, I think it's like arctic white or something like that and I put that up against the wall and what in retrospect I probably should have just um used it on the floor and then just had the white wall and then i wouldn't have had to but it wouldn't have been pure white you know so um i was what happened was i mean if you look at you know we did the the intent was you know shooting with a small width paper like that you know the intent is to get you know shots like this um where you know you can crop in i still didn't get her all in there i still have a little bit on the sides here but that's manageable you know um you know we were doing shots like this uh that's a beautiful shot just love it uh love her pose there and, and this one these kind of shots just you know that's that's what we were going for but then <laughs> you know model starts to turn sideways and you're like oh shit uh how's this gonna work you know um you know if if i didn't have the photoshop skills i probably would have just removed the paper and just shot with this flooring here and just the white background and it would have made a nice shot and i wouldn't have had to do a lot of photoshop editing uh, maybe this uh, little light socket over here or something um but that's what you're thinking you're like crap she's turning sideways she's not fitting um you know so then i tell her well hey bring your legs you know forward a little bit that's kind of a cool shot a little bit of a distorted foot you know and try and get her back into the the frame you know of the shot and again i'm like this is all this is pretty realistic i'm sitting probably right here at the bottom of the frame of where this picture is um using my tamron 28 to 70 70 i'm at 28 um just thinking in my head how am i going to do this this was a shot that i posted this is one of my favorite shots from the shoot this was really kind of the intent um originally still didn't fit her on there but you know i could have done some aggressive cropping here and got most of it and and it wouldn't have been a big deal right and and this is just an amazing amazing pose look at her just just perfection uh here's another one just amazing so that was the original uh kind of scope of the shoot was to get shots where you know i actually get the model in frame and get her you know composed at my composition get her get it right in camera you know as much as possible i still you know if you look at it um i still had these little i knew i could the reason i used the tape right there because this was 
uh, the paper was, you know, hanging from up here and it was getting little kind of wrinkles in it, you know, and I was trying to tape it down flush against the, the, the backdrop. And I knew, you know, knowing that I had some Photoshop skills, I could just, you know, clone stamp the tape out and expand the edges. But, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of great shots. Here's another one. Uh, just lot, so many great shots from the shoot. Um, and then we brought the chair in and that's where it started um you know full kind of full length body shots not going to happen in a small studio right without when i'm three four feet away from her trying to get all of her in and not get the rest of the room in there it's what do you do you're just gonna have to if you know that you don't have photoshop skills you're just gonna have to remove the paper and just go with the flooring here and this is a faux floor actually that i put in there i uh, got it from home depot just some like a big sheet of i think it's like eight foot by probably six foot uh paneling wall paneling that you can put up on your wall just put it on the floor looks pretty cool does a job i probably take the paper away and just do that you know with the flooring and the wall and it would still look pretty good i wanted a pure white all pure white so it would end up like that uh and i, I knew i could do it but uh, i mean i thought i could do it <laughs> i wasn't sure but i did it so uh again this was again the final shot that the one that i posted and just love it so we'll go through it uh this was actually you know i had uh, several shots to choose from here um so this was the shot that i chose and this is my wife's arm coming in and she, we were trying to do hold the hair and do little hair flips and kind of time it you know um so I, this is a shot we ended up using and, um, I didn't, the only thing, legs, perfect eyes, the look, just everything. Perfect. Um, wasn't crazy about the, the hand there. Um, so I was kind of looking through them. This might've been a good one. This is a great one too. Her hands a little better there. I might've should have chose that one. I, I, I don't know. Uh, for whatever reason, I think I just liked the way the legs were on this one. Um, here was another one also good, but she kind of had the claw going there on the hand <laughs> And still with the claw. I don't know the claw kind of bothers me. I don't know uh, So we had you know, this is nice too um, It's just a matter of picking one and then we had this one which you know, I went landscape and This one's awesome, too. Um, I really maybe I should have picked that one. I don't know you know hindsight is 2020 but Maybe it still would have been a lot of editing to do. And I think I actually pulled the hair from one of these. It wasn't this one. I, uh, let's take my filter off. There was another one in here that I actually think that the hair was pulled in. But I actually composited the hair from another shot. It wasn't this one. It was another shot in here. Um, so, because I didn't like you know on the final shot well this was where i got it from this one here i didn't like just the hair being straight i wanted some action in the hair so i composited the hair and you can see i brought it in from another shot and i'll show you exactly how i did that great shoot again great model which she brought like three or four outfits with her that's what we plan to do we had like you know i was in my house so we had all the time in the world um just beautiful shot there um go back to some of my rated shots um we you know switched up backgrounds i used a gel on i think a that might have been a gray background probably since the gel is so saturated um just you know it's a little bit underexposed there but um just great great time we had with this shoe one of the best shoots ever uh, this backdrop was actually it was the foil cover that came on my big screen tv <laughs> and i saved it and you know you pull it off the tv uh it's like a little cover and i folded it up and i saved it and i said you know I'm, I'm gonna use this one day and i did you can still see the crease right here <laughs> and right here oh man but look just beautiful great hand posing look at that um you know, not all of us have a big budget. What can I say? I use what I could to get the shot that I wanted. Um, here's where we did 
This was a, uh, I didn't use a gel there. It was a canvas backdrop and it's painted kind of blue, you know. We were able to use that. I kind of wish I had lit the backdrop a little bit more, but um, these are just really great shots too. So let's uh, get back to, I'll show you guys how I went. Let me find the shot. How I went from that right there in Photoshop. I did basic edits in Lightroom. Uh, the exposure was pretty spot on out of camera, actually. Um, that's the raw. Let me see. Going to uh, exposure. Brought it down to minus 0 0.07. Um, it was pretty much, I probably sharpened it a little bit. Um, I didn't really do anything to it. I just think I just brought it right into Photoshop. So um, shot at 28 millimeters. F6.3, 1 200 seconds, ISO 50, pretty textbook. Um, and then I brought it into Photoshop and I ended up with this. So, how did I do it? Well, let's get into the edit. I appreciate you guys uh, hanging in there and listening to me jabber on. This is for you lo fi, uh, on a budget, don't have a lot, I don't have a big studio shooting at home um just doing what you can but you do have you know you got that subscription of lightroom and photoshop you can make it happen you can do it uh so let's get into the edit thanks for watching i'm gonna open this in photoshop and we'll see if i can recreate what i did originally all right so here i am in photoshop and let me actually, uh, I'm going to need to get that other shot to get that composite of the hair. So let me go over and grab that. Okay, so I've got that over here. So I took the hair from this one and I composited it into this one. First thing I'll do though is start kind of trying to work on this, this background here. So let's see if I can kind of fill in this is not going to be easy i must have spent a lot of time on this so let me go back here and i'm gonna come here and kind of i'm just letting the magnetic lasso tool is what i'm using here i'm just kind of letting it do its thing and we'll come here actually we need to come here Doesn't have to be perfect, but I want to get it as good as I can here. So let me go to there. So that's my selection area, and I'm going to choose Edit, Content Aware Fill. I'm going to tell it basically, hey, I want to use to fill in all this over here. I want to use these pixels, right? A little dirt on the canvas there where she was walking little trick that um, you know models can use or we can use for models not to get the paper dirty if they're going to be wearing heels or shoes or boots um, is to have a little rag over here on the side and they wipe their feet on the rag before they step on the paper so look over here and it's going to think about what it's going to do there not great but it's filling it in so let's just see it's a start okay so you can see it did at least fill it in with paper you know we're gonna have to uh, one thing about the magnetic lasso tool it's really annoying if you click anywhere it just starts going all over the place so sometimes I'll just get off of that thing and just click over here and do one click and so nothing is selected so it's a little messy we'll have to kind of work on the transitions of the paper here but not too bad let me you know make this a little easier on myself and go ahead and just crop it a little bit where i think it should go maybe there uh, maybe raise her up a little bit higher maybe there that gets rid of some of the tape at the top and kind of fills in this area up here so that saves me a little bit 
So let me go over here to this side. Okay, I've got to go back to my magnetic lasso tool. Come here. And I'm just going to go around to just like this. Because we just want to fill in this area with white. Okay. And there will be some spots on the edges where it doesn't get it perfect, but I just want to see if I can get as much filled in as I can. I'm going to choose Edit Content Aware Fill. And let's tell it to use these pixels. These pixels all the way to here. Right. Let's see what it figures out over here. Look over here to the preview. So look at this. This side it did a lot better. It's just a lot smoother. Hit OK. Maybe I'll do this other side again, you know. If I can't transition this. Okay, so filled that in pretty nicely. Uh, let's go and fill this in. Probably should have done the crop first. A lot of content aware fill. That was just shows edit content aware fill again. Come down to here. And look over here and we'll see what it comes up with. Okay, so it filled it in again some obvious artifacts here straight edge there and there uh, right there but we'll go with it okay so I'm going to come over here to this side I'll just use my lasso tool and we'll grab this guy here try to include the shadow as well because if there's nothing there, there shouldn't be a shadow, right? Edit content or fill. And we'll give it samples from just right around here. Look over here. See what it comes up with. Looks cool. I like that. I'm going to hit OK. We'll wait for it to come up over here. Yeah, nice. So this side went a lot better than this side. We've still got some areas here that I'm going to have to get. And then obviously we're going to composite that hair in. Uh, let me see if I can just... Um, I haven't decided if I want to maybe try the... Horrible selection there. By yours truly. If I want to try... Just the patch tool, let me see. Kind of remove that line. Come in here and remove some of this stuff and just see if we can do some cleanup. It's a little, little messy, especially through here. And, you know, I'm not getting it super perfect. I'm just trying to do some basic cleanup here of this background. Just by using the patch. Patch tool is so cool. I mean, I could come in and I could also use the clone stamp tool if I wanted to. And do some of this. So I may do, you know, actually a combination of both. So just doing a little bit of cleanup here is helping a lot, actually. I mean, you can still see kind of wrinkles in the backdrop. And obviously, I did not. 
you know it's obviously I did not blow out the background white so that's also kinda not, ide <laughs> not ideal if you want a perfectly white background which is not always the case you know sometimes you want a little texture in the background or a little you know a little some, just to show that there's something back there but in this shot I the way I ended it up I think I just uh, eventually just blew it out white because I thought it looked better now what I do in the studio if I know that I'm gonna be using a white background and I want to do high key and blow it out I'll I'll bring my laptop with me and connect my a7 III to it and uh, bring up Capture One, which I'm still actually, I don't use it for editing yet, but I do like to use it for uh, the purpose of capturing live photos because it's, it's much quicker than Lightroom. And as you take your shots, they come up fairly quickly on the screen. And it's got, uh, you know, you can see when something's blown out right away, if you're blowing out the background or not, because it'll give you, you know, the, the red the preview in the background where if every anything that's in red in the background means it's it's blown out and so you can see kinda how blown out you are and make adjustments it's kinda cool so we'll take and move it up there that's a little weird okay we'll have to replace that anyway so this is gonna get tricky in here anyway then you gotta zoom in here. You see these spots. So we'll do magnetic lasso and see what we get here. I think we're gonna have to just do a manual selection here. Uh, this is a tough one. Gonna have to do some clone stamping. I don't know if I like that selection. Let me use, uh, I can't decide if I want to use the pen tool or the, let's just try this. We'll go here. Just like that. We'll go to the clone stamp tool, which is this one. Flow of 100%, opacity 100%. Hit enter after you enter that 100% in there. And I'll just hold down the alter option key, grab a sample from right here, an area nearby, and fill that in. You see, I made this selection, so if I try to, I won't, whatever I'm doing, I'm clicking and dragging and painting here, and nothing's happening because it's only going to impact the area that I selected. So I'm going to have to probably, there's like a little shadow kind of thing here that's. You know, I don't know. I'm going to reselect. I'm going to just going to manually kind of. I just want to get this little spot right here. A little white spot. Let's do that. Yeah, that's better. So I'll kind of grab a sample from there. See that? Now there's obviously it's not perfect because you have this shadow here which is a little a little strange. I'm gonna come in here and do a little see if I can kind of clone stamp that so it doesn't look so weird. I might have just made it weirder. I need a smaller brush. Yeah, I made it weirder. It's trial and error sometimes with this. And then what I can do is take my lasso tool since this kind of looks weird to me. I didn't like that selection. Just gonna kinda sort of grab that right there and see if I can blend it a little better. I'm 
might need to liquefy a little bit just to kind of smooth that out. So let's go to liquefy, filter, liquefy. Okay, so let's, let's zoom into the, the spot here that I want to look at. All right. So let me just kind of bring that in just a little bit and bring that in a little bit. And we're going to bring this out just a little bit. And to me, that looks a little bit better right there. I'm going to hit OK. There's another spot up here that I probably need to get. Some weirdism. I'll try the magnetic lasso tool, see if it'll latch onto the edge of the skin for me. And I'll go back to the clone stamp tool. Use the right bracket key next over by the P to resize it. Grab a sample from right there by holding down Alt and then just paint right over it. Pretty good. Control zero gets us back out and looks fine. So the next thing, this is looking better, right? We've got this area over here, which is going to be very challenging. So let's see what we can do about that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to flatten this out. Uh, it's pretty much how I want it to be. Uh, there's, I can't see me wanting to save the layer, so I'm going to flatten the image. And what's going to happen now is I'm going to need to come over here to this shot. Oh boy, this is going to be, this is not going to be easy. I'm going to have to get the lasso tool here. We'll come over here and just make a selection of just the hair. Like that. And I'm going to copy it. I could hit Control C or choose Edit Copy. And then I'm going to come over here and I'll hit edit paste and you can see it paste it over here and it pastes it into a new layer grab your your move tool up here and now I can grab that and we'll bring it about right up to there and then I can use my down arrow key on my keyboard and just kinda finesse it into place just like that pretty cool you know we still got some we got some issues here and it's going to be a tough one a little finger right there <laughs> where'd she get that finger in her hair weirdo all right so let me think about this we might need to do like a select color range and have it select the white and then do some clone stamping at that point let's see what we can do with that Let's do a select and come up here and choose color range. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to select this area here. And we'll adjust the fuzziness. And I'm looking at the hair over there really. Because I want it to select as much as possible in that hair region. Because we're really, even if it gets, it's going to get some areas of her uh, and not, because I, I want it to select mostly the white in the background. So there's going to be some areas of her that's going to get, but I'm going to be working just in this area. So if I can get a real good selection here that doesn't include the hair, hopefully that'll be very helpful. So I'm going to go about right to there. I'll hit OK. And so what I'm going to do now is, since I want to operate on this outside area, so let's just get the clone stamp. I'm going to do a flow of like 30% for starters. And I'm going to come in here with kind of a large stamp. And I just want to see, I'm going to get a sample from maybe right here. And let's just see what it does. Is it going to blend into, yeah, blend it into the hair. So I'm going to hit Control-Z. 
Yeah, okay. So I, I actually did not need to select inverse because it was already selecting the white. Went too far. That's why you probably want to just get a sample and do a little bit. Let go. That way if you go too far, you don't have to start all over. So I'll get a sample from right here. Do a little bit. I'm just kind of lightly brushing. Just trying to clear out that line, you know. Get a sample from here. And let's get this little line here. Whoops. No, we don't want to do that. Control Z. Let me get a. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller by hitting the bracket key, the left bracket key. I'm going to come in here. Just kind of get this in here. Get another sample. Come over here. Let's see if we can get this here. Still see a little something there. I'm going to see if I can grab that. So it's still a little darker in there. Uh, let me just see if I can get some of that as well. All right, I'm going to pick the lasso tool and just select off the canvas. Look at that. Pretty darn good. I see a little spot right there I could fix. And maybe a little spot here and here. And then <laughs> she's still got the fingers in her hair. So I'll have to go up and figure that out. I'll probably, like, here's a little cutoff spot. I'll probably grab a little piece of hair, clone stamp it, put it over the finger maybe. Okay, so let's zoom in here. I'm going to go into a another new layer here. And... I really want to use the uh, just the patch tool, but I'll have to flatten my layer down to do that. It doesn't like doing that on an empty layer. So before I do that, let me just uh, make my sample a little smaller. I'm going to use the clone stamp tool and just see if I can just clone stamp this out real quick. And I've got my uh, flow at 30%, so I'm having to swipe a few times. You know, there's some stuff here that's kind of hard edges, you know, but it did a pretty good job. You know, the, the edges are not too hard on the hair out here. Uh, I think I could have used a select subject, you know, when I did this and I made the outside white, but I think the select color range works a little better when you've got, uh, when you don't want hard lines everywhere, like it's an obvious cut, right? Uh, so... A little strangeness right there maybe and there's a hard line right there let's see if I can uh, I'm gonna take my brush hardness I'm gonna put it at maybe 30% or my clone stamp hardness and I'm gonna come right here make it a little smaller kind of just want to see if I can get this hard edge out of here just kind of make it a little softer like that there we go not bad not bad and it's a little bit blurry you know in this area it looks alright so for this spot up here and let me do a select subject okay so then I'm gonna right click and select inverse so everything but the subject is selected and that will allow me to go in here and increase my flow up to like 50%. I'm going to get a sample from right here. Okay, i got to make sure that I'm on, we're on this layer here. I had gone to the background layer to select the subject. It was taking quite a while, there we go. So now it's getting rid of, rid of that little spot. So I'll just deselect everything. When I deselect everything, I just grab my lasso tool and just select on the canvas somewhere one time, and it will deselect everything. So there's two spots here. There's uh, this spot and this spot, and then there's this little spot right here. Let me see what I can do here first. I might want to, again, use the clone stamp. 
you got about a hundred percent just come up here and just start trying to clone stamp this out a little bit there we go and then I'm gonna need to come up here we'll do that one and then I'm gonna need to kinda do something here not sure if I like that I'm looking for a sample that'll kinda fill this out that could be okay uh, you know I could do just grab this from here and just see if it will kinda blend in a little bit erase that and then the other piece I want to do is right here let me just see if I can kinda blend this a little bit another little swipe here just to get that hard line out of there we'll come here real tedious work but there we go so now I'm going to that looks good I'm gonna hit control zero and zoom out and boom we've got all that taken care of so the last thing I would do, and I'm going to flatten my layers down. You probably want to keep your layers. I'm trying to save memory as I'm uh, running Photoshop and recording at the same time. I don't mind the background actually the way it is. Um, there are some little shadows in here. Here's a little spot here. Uh, let me hit Control J just so I'm not working directly in the background. There's a couple spots uh, like this one right here that's a little weird. I think that was a shoe print. Here's a shoe print, but you know it's kind of in the shadow. Uh, you know, let me see what happens. So it kind of retained the shadow when I did that. So a little bit more cleanup here. It's another little spot. Not bad, there's a little footprint right here. Really getting nitpicky here, you know, but it's another little spot. So the the background as a whole is not pure white. Um, it wasn't shot pure white, and normally you want to try to get it pure white if you're doing high key shots like this. Uh, so let me go to I'm gonna go to the select subject again. And you can see that even more when you're looking at the small, you can see the small little icon of this. You can see it gets pretty dark over here on the left side. So let's do a select subject and see if we can kind of, I think the goal for me, since this is just one shot, I'm not doing multiple shots that have to be exactly the same, you know, uh, whiteness in the back. This is one time deal. I'm just going to kind of clean it up a little bit. Okay. So got the subject selected and then I'm going to select inverse so it's going to select everything but the subject I got to be careful around the hair because there's some really cool strands here that make it look natural and I don't want to get into those too much so I'm, I'm a little reluctant to, to do this but I just want to see what happens so I'm gonna have a brush tool make my canvas a little smaller and I'm gonna have a flow of like 30% and I'm going to come in here with, say, this color and grab a sample, hold down the Alter Option key, grab that sample, and then I'm going to do a swipe across here. And you see it made it kind of white. Now I'm going to do a swipe down here. Clean that area up. Now I don't want to get rid of the shadow by our feet and everything in the chair because that looks pretty good. And actually that did a real good job of cleaning it up now if I'm going for I'll do another click in the corner there if I'm going for pure white I'm not I'm probably not there and how can I check that um, right click over here off the canvas and I don't have a white here so I can change the color of my background here I can go to I think white is loaded in custom yeah so if I want pure white I'm not there yet see how much whiter that is um, it's closer to, it's wider than even her shoes. But, let me go back to the dark gray. 
there could be a little more cleanup there I could do now I just hit control Z and it went back to my selection that I deselected a little trick there so I don't have to go back and reselect everything maybe now that I've seen what it looks like with pure white uh, so if you're going to upload it to a website say that has pure white background you can see what the difference is going to be or Instagram uh, if you're using the white theme on your phone uh, it, there's definitely going to be a border around it so that's just something you want to think about does it bother me um, with one shot not really um, I know this is not a high key shot I mean it's a high key shot but it's not perfect white but there's some stuff in there that I kind of want to fill in and I'm not even probably the widest part of this is probably that right there so if I wanted to I could kind of blend a little bit more do a few swipes across make it a little bit wider so it's I'm just clicking here and there so it's better than it was it's not perfect white and I'm okay with that as long as that's your intent so I'm gonna click off to here I'll hit control zero and that's pretty much it I'll save this okay so here we have it back in Lightroom so we took I didn't even do any dodging I could do I could still do dodging and burning kind of clean up this little scratch right here um, there's still some things I could do but it's really good the way it is I mean I'm I, I would put it out like this they you know um, this is this is nice we went from uh, we ended up here and we started from original shot being this one right in a very tiny room no business shooting a full body shot really like this um, you really want to be you know in a larger larger room or a studio with larger backdrop paper so you don't have to do any of this but then what would I what would I build a tutorial based on then right this is for you guys that are guys and gals that are in small uh, areas and you want to do a shot like this and uh, you can you, you just got to have some Photoshop skills right so uh, so we went from that and then we took uh, uh, we took one of these other samples over here I think it was maybe this one we composited the hair from that uh, and put it onto the what ended up being the final shot which was this one uh, so that's it I hope you learned something I hope you enjoyed it uh, I appreciate you hanging in there if you're still awake give this a thumbs up if you liked it and uh, if you like my work please subscribe I really appreciate it thank you